Hi students and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada, capital city of British Columbia. I hope that all of you are having a good weekend so far. I hope you're getting some rest, you're staying healthy and you're learning lots. Welcome Akira, good to see you as well. Hi Nipa. Nice to see students joining in and welcome to our members, Fuang, Chayani. Good to have you with me. Uh, students, we are looking at IELTS uh, speaking part three about social places, places where people gather, have fun, meet each other. Good topic for the weekend. I hope you have a bit of a chance for this on the weekend to gather with your friends and your family and even maybe meet some new people. Of course, this is a continuation from the previous uh, lesson that ended 30 minutes ago, which was speaking part two, talk about a place to meet new people. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites we use in the live classes. They're basically the textbooks, the materials, the tools. So if you like these live classes and you watch them regularly, I strongly recommend joining our premium IELTS package. It's very easy, it's very affordable, it's not expensive. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. You simply just click that big red button that's above my head there and it's a one-time payment. Um, we are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. You're in great hands with us. Click that red button. We've got a new discount code for you, History um, 99. It's related to the most recent uh, video that we just released today. It's a 10% discount and you're good. You're off to the races. A general IELTS, same idea, green background. Click the big red button. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access and you will not regret it. Um, it's a good investment of your time and your money. So uh, there you are. IELTS, uh, sorry, Academic IELTS Help will get you to our app. The app will link to the website. The discount code only works on the website. Keep that in mind. General IELTS Help will uh, get you to our general um, IELTS uh, uh, app. And uh, if you have questions, send me an email to adrian at um, aehelp.com. If you just have a general question, you can send it to our staff admin at aehelp.com. We'll help you out. Hemanth, very nice. Um, I'm looking at the chat constantly. I will be speaking with students today. I'm looking at the uh, chat right now and I'm just uh, looking at what Hemanth has written. Um, Hemanth uh, wrote this just now. I want to share it with everybody. Share the good news. Hamanth writes, hey sir, I've recently given my IELTS exam. I've secured seven band. Thank you so much for your videos and tips. Hamanth, you deserve it. I'm sure you worked very hard for it. Thumbs up to you. I'm glad you got that seven. That means you are a good user of English. That's lovely. Uh, Hamanth, uh, please write a testimonial. Students, when you get good bands and you have something nice to say like a month we love to get those testimonials to encourage other students to get our materials watch our classes and really get those great scores that's what motivates us that's what makes us happy hearing stories like that a month and we had another student in the last class it just makes my day it makes my week okay so so send me a, a testimonial a month to adrian at aehelp.com okay all right students uh, our schedule uh, right now speaking part three everybody joins the chat and uh, hopefully we have lots of volunteers uh, in the speaking in a few moments here um, and uh, then we've got no class until Thursday that's usual sometimes we have special classes on Sundays not this week and uh, then we will have a uh, speaking part one class for everybody on uh, Thursday and then reading, listening, more speaking next week. So lots to go. Again, these materials are uh, brought to you by our websites. 
We've got a new HD video, practice video, karaoke style, or as we discussed last class, karaoke style. Uh, karaoke style. Um, there you go. That link is in the chat. Check that out when you have a bit of time. Now, uh, let's get into IELTS speaking part three. Oh, and yeah, by the way, of course, uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell button. That's definitely a good first step. Okay, when you have a moment. Uh, we're almost at 2 million subscribers. We're going to hit that for before 2023. Super exciting, by the way. I've, I haven't said that, but I should. And that's all thanks to you amazing people who are following us. Um, all right, so IELTS speaking part three, last part of your speaking section. You're almost there for your speaking anyway. Um, okay, this is a speaking class, so I want you to speak and repeat. As many of you know, I have a West Coast North American accent. It's clean, it's crisp, it's basically the Hollywood accent. A lot of the actors, actresses in Hollywood are from the West Coast and they have the same kind of accent. That's why I probably sound very familiar to you. Ah, okay, Adrian kind of sounds like the movies. <laughs> maybe um, okay so speak and repeat copy it's a clean crisp accent copy me repeat what I say repeat the questions so uh, we finished part two everybody or well maybe not everybody but many people who were in that last class what was part two about part two you want to remember part two okay for part three remember your answer And remember your ideas. This greatly helps uh, with part three. Okay. So, yeah, Raquia, uh, Chayani, it was a place to meet new people. And remember what that place was? Yeah, that's right, Raquia, Board Game Cafe. So, places to meet new people and we talked about a board game cafe okay um remember your other ideas that, that you had for this as well so you, we talked about a local uh, pub to play uh, billiards darts maybe we talked about the uh, jakarta library uh, we talked about a tomb. I can't remember what tomb it was, but it was a tomb. That's right, Fong, the board game cafe. The office kitchen. Sure. Venice <laughs> says it's a good place to meet new people. Okay. Office kitchen. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, so remember those because those ideas become very useful for part three to stay fluent and to give answers. These uh, can help you to be fluent and give good answers. So even though the examiner will tell you to put the note paper to the side after you finish part two and the pencil, don't forget what you put on that piece of paper. Don't forget part two. A lot of people do and that's not good, okay? Ainur says conversation clubs are great places. Absolutely, clubs, clubs of all types, Ainur, are great places. Okay, so you finish part two and then you start part three and the examiner will say that is the end of part two. I will now take back the questions. Please put the note paper to the side, turn it over. Please put your pen or your pencil to the side as well. And now we will continue with part three for this part. I will ask you a question related to your response and some questions connected to the topic of part two. And then in the IELTS exam, they will ask you a question that's related to your response. So they might ask you something like this. Uh, when is the uh, last time that you went to this uh, board game cafe? And then you'll have to answer in a nice full sentence. So, well, it has been a while, uh, maybe three or uh, four months since the last time I went there because 
uh, I have been quite busy with my studies. However, I will have winter uh, break in a, a couple of weeks. And my uh, friends and I have already made a uh, plan uh, to go there and have some uh, fun. Okay, during the holidays. Right? So that would be a good answer, okay? So um, the examiner will always ask you one question, sometimes two questions, that are directly related to uh, your um, part two answer. And that will help to uh, remind you that part three and part two are connected, okay? So uh, part two and part three are connected. The examiner, um, to give you a band eight or nine, even a 7.5, uh, they must feel that the speaking section is a connected conversation rather than a uh, Q&A session. Q&A session means question and answer session. Okay, this is a very important point. I don't always talk about it, but it's really important. You have to understand this, okay? So for the examiner to give you a band eight or a band nine, they need to feel that you are having a connected conversation, not like a Q&A session, like where do you go to school? I go to Victoria High School. Um, how often do you meet your friends? I meet my friends on the weekend once or twice a week. What is your favorite food? My favorite food are, uh, is pizza and uh, spaghetti. So you can't have this kind of Q&A type of feeling to it. If you have this Q&A feeling, your score is going to be lower than a band aid, okay? So it has to be connected. It has to be like, where do you go to school? Um, I currently attend Victoria High School. I'm in grade 11 and um, I'm going to be uh, graduating next year. How often do you meet your friends? Well, usually when I'm finished my schoolwork, I meet them afterwards or on the weekends. What is your favorite food? When I come home from school, from Vic High, there's nothing better than a great bite of pepperoni pizza. In fact, I had a slice just yesterday when I was finished classes. That's connected, okay? Everything is kind of coming together. I'm making connections with the topics and the subjects in what I'm saying. Conversation. Does everybody understand the difference between speaking section feeling like a conversation versus speaking section feeling like a Q&A session? There's a clear distinction there. Okay. Does everybody get that? Okay, especially well, even from the start, from part one, but especially part two and three. I mean, they kind of tell you they're like part three or yeah, part three is connected to part two. So Feta says, nope, <laughs> no, nope, please. Um, so it's a conversation. I mean, that, that's why they ask you a question. So after part two, they will say, I will ask you a question related to your response. They literally say that. OK, it's a part of their instructions. So um, we talked about a, game, a board game cafe, interactivity. And so the examiner says, when is the last time that you went to this board game cafe? And then you say, well, it has been a while, maybe three or four months since the last time I went there because I have been quite busy with my studies. However, I will have winter break in a couple of weeks. And my friends and I have already made plans to go there and have some fun uh, during the holidays, okay? So uh, that's the connection. And then the examiner says, let's talk about social places and practices. What are common places where people can socialize with each other? And then here you can make the connection again. Um, as I had just mentioned, cafes, especially um, game cafes, are a great place or are great places 
to network with other people. Aside from that, um, individuals can join uh, sports clubs or conversation clubs uh, to meet new friends. Okay, so notice that connection, as I just mentioned, cafes, especially game cafes, okay? So that's that kind of connection, that conversation where the information is related, it's connected, okay? Um, does that make sense? Alfred says, when I did an IELTS placement last month, the questions were not related from the first, second, and third part. Um, that's really strange, Alfred. Uh, was that just a practice test that you did in class or in some school somewhere? Uh, some people are not using good materials, okay? They make the mistake. When I started at the very beginning, a long time ago, 20 years ago, um, we had some speaking questions that were not related, but definitely the questions are related in the IELTS exams today, especially part two and three. Part one is not. Part one is a bit different, but sometimes even part one questions can be connected to part two and three. Part two and three are definitely related. So when you go to your exam, you will see that. And even if it doesn't seem like that right away, you will realize that, oh yeah, these are connected. Okay. All right. So Alfred, if that was a practice class, they're using bad material if it's not connected. Okay. Uh, Jatinder, same thing. Okay. If it's the real exam, that's strange. That's very rare that they wouldn't be connected or you might not have made the connection as you should have. Okay. The instructions for the examiner literally say part three is connected to the topic of part two. Like they say, now I will ask you some questions related to the topic of part two, okay? All right, so they are related. No questions about it, all right? Jatinder says, in the real exam, mm, you have to rethink it. It should have been, okay? Sometimes it seems that they're a little bit off, but they're not. Um, okay, uh, so, Uh, not necessarily, Megan, as long as you made up a good answer. Megan's asking, if I made up the answer for part two, then will I be having a part a hard time for part three? No, not if you've made up a good answer, okay? All right, um, so let's do this, okay? Um, let's do part three, and remember when you're answering, you want to always give an answer, an explanation, and an example. Okay, how can you remind yourself to give an explanation? So when you say, for example, um, as I had just mentioned, cafes, especially game cafes, are great places to network with other people. Aside from that, individuals can join sports clubs or conversation clubs to meet new friends. How can I remember to give an explanation here? What can I do? Okay. Sandesh, we have lots of general great classes online. No live classes these days, but uh, lots of great videos in your course. Okay. PB Sports, good luck on your exam tomorrow. Let us know the connection between part two and part three. Alfred says visualize the moment. Um, there's even a simpler trick, Alfred, to uh, continue with the explanation. Okay. Um, a great way is to just use the word, yeah, exactly, honey, to just use a subordinating conjunction like because, okay? Um, because there are like-minded uh, people who also like football or cricket or are interested in uh, speaking English, okay? And then, to remember the uh, example, you can say, like the other day, I uh, played uh, drop-in uh, football and met a new friend, okay? Drop-in football, there's some drop-in clubs where you just go and you play, you pay a couple dollars, okay? 
<laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> the uh, I was about to cough and speak at the same time. Um, so, uh, the word because will help you to continue with the uh, explanation and the word like or just will help you to continue with the uh, example, okay? All right, Chen's like, Rrr. okay. So um, use those uh, conjunctions to help remind you to say the explanation, to say uh, the example, okay? All right, um, so I want to give lots of people a chance to uh, speak in this class. And what that means is that we are going to use the website for that. So you can actually talk to me. I'm going to put on my ears. I recommend getting out your uh, headsets and your uh, mic, your microphone if you've got it, or your headset with your microphone. And then we're going to go to the website, aehelp.com. Okay, I'm going to put this into the chat. And uh, when you're on the website, create an account. Um, you go to your My Student account, okay? Now for people who are doing this regularly, go there now and check your microphone, check your connection, make sure everything is working. Click on the Student um, Partner Speaking button. Okay, test your microphone, allow it in the browser. So when the browser says, do you want this website to use your microphone? Yes, we need to be able to talk to each other. Um, and then uh, you will see me as master. Okay, my name will be master and write me a message. Say, I want to volunteer. Do that by clicking on the blue envelope. Let me show you. So this is the General IELTS website. You can log in here as well. I'm going to log in to the academic website. You can join by uh, clicking this big red button above my head. Get the premium user access. It's a one-time payment. Or you can join for free with this green button. And then uh, you will have a My Student account. For those of you who have it already, just log in, okay? You'll have lots of goodies uh, in your account, practice exams, audio CDs, lesson videos, a full course, lots of help, everything you need for your IELTS on this website. Um, and you want to click on this student partner speaking right there that's above my head, okay? And when you click on student partner speaking, um, you get a pop-up, that's really a simple pop-up. It just means that you're not going to, um, use this for other purposes than IELTS speaking. You are polite, you're not going to share information and you're responsible for your information. So you accept that and you, um, you are going to be in here in the speaking and you'll see a whole bunch of lovely people, okay? So um, you see, let me just make this bigger so you can see the people better. Uh, you see Jacko at the top, who is a premium user and one of our members, as I learned last class. Let me make that a little bit smaller there. Actually, you know what? Maybe I can, uh, no, I can't scroll around like that. So I'll make it a little bit smaller. All right, there. Um, you can see Jacko here. Now, Jacko, if you want to volunteer, make sure to click on the blue button beside my name, Master, and write, I want to volunteer. Okay, we have Un, uh, we have Alfred, um, we have Tanya, Kenjaeva, we have lots of people, which is awesome. Uh, let's, um, let's see who's at the bottom of our list here. We have uh, Sandesh, Shahib, Federico. Uh, let's give Federico a chance. I don't think we've heard from Federico yet. Uh, Federico, are you ready? I can see the message from Federico, which says, I want to volunteer. You can see that uh, right here. Um, we might have a WebSocket issue again. Let me just check that. I'll have to reset that. You guys might have to rejoin. So Federico, hang in there. Um, I'll reset our server here. We're doing a whole bunch of upgrades to our websites over this weekend, so that's why you might see some um, disturbance uh, in the um,
in the services, but don't worry, just refresh your page. So we're trying to minimize this, okay? All right, so uh, there you are, Jacko. You, you got my message there, uh, which is great. Okay, so we'll start with Jacko. I'll reach out. Was it Jacko that I contacted? Or maybe. <laughs> All right. I know Jacko wanted to volunteer. Jacko, did you want to volunteer? I think you had some trouble before. Okay. Or what? No, it was Federico, right? Okay, Jacko, I'll come back to you, right? I just forgot there while I was resetting. Uh, Federico, you're ready, right? <laughs> Hi. Okay, ready. Great. Okay. Hola, Adrian. Hey, Adrian. <laughs> Hi, Federico. How are you? Fine. Uh, I'm from Argentina. Thank I was guessing. For, for I, I was guessing that when you said "hola," <laughs> I'm like, okay, Spanish country, uh, for sure. Yes. <laughs> hola, Adrian. Hola, Federico. Um, yeah, in the aisles, definitely make sure not to use foreign words. Um, somebody asked me that uh, the other day. They're like, "What if I use some foreign words and then explain them?" It's best not to. So you don't want to use foreign words. Um, I, I say even like names, you want to kind of change them into English. So if you go to um, a cafe that's called uh, Buenas Noches or something, you want to say it's Good Night Cafe. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So, um, and pardon my uh, <laughs> Spanish pronunciation, it's horrible. Um, okay, um, Federico, so you're from Argentina. What part of Argentina? I'm living in Buenos Aires, but I'm from the north of Argentina at a province called Misiones, uh, where the uh, one of the seven wonderful places of the world are located is the Cataratas, the Iguazu Falls. Iguazu Falls. I have not been there, but my younger brother and my parents have been there. In fact, Federico, my younger brother proposed to his wife at Iguazu Falls. How do you like that? So I am familiar with the uh, Iguazu Falls. So you were from, uh, that's close to the, uh, well, Iguazu Falls is right on the border of uh, Argentina and Brazil, is it not? Yes, it is. It's border with Brazil and also Paraguay. And Paraguay, yeah. So there's a bit of geography lesson for everybody in the world. It's one of the seven wonders of the world. Quite beautiful. Yeah, if uh, you have the chance, uh, Google it. Iguazu uh, Falls. All right, and why are you taking the IELTS exam? I want to take this IELTS exam because I want to get the work, uh, work on holiday visa for Australia. For Australia, so a holiday working visa, that is a great visa when you're young and you want to do a bit of uh, traveling and working. I did that many years ago in Japan. I had a holiday working visa and that's where I uh, really fell in love with teaching English. So good for you. Um, what score do you need for that visa? Uh, they requires a dot for five, but it's not as much, but uh, I believe this requires a lot of practice to get this score anyway. A band five? Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. band five is not too bad. Um, so it's called moderate or modest English at band five. Um, and um, I will help you with this, okay? I figured it would be a bit of a lower band score than for study or for immigration. Um, so yes, I can help you with this. I will ask you a couple of questions. Give me some nice full sentence answers with explanation examples, okay? Okay, thank All you right. for, the, for the drive. You're most welcome. Here we go. So let's talk about social places and practices. What are common places where people can socialize with each other? I think uh, a common place uh, where I can meet people is at the sport club where a lot of people practice the same uh, sport and I said the kitchen office because uh, it is a place where I meet professionals uh, of, of my corporate office. Which of these is the best to meet a new friend? 
the best uh, to meet a new friend, uh, I think, is the club, the sport club. Why? Because we do the same activities and are and, and we are interested in same, like a uh, late with a late a lifting and basketball, for example. Okay, I'll stop right there and then give you some feedback. So I think you're at about a band five. Okay, so that's about a band five. So you're pretty much there for the for the uh, um, speaking. Great to hear that. Yeah, so you understand the question, which is good. Sometimes people have a bit of difficulty understanding part three questions. Um, but you understood and you answered. Uh, your accent is quite thick, so you definitely have that Argentinian Spanish thick um, accent. But the more you speak English and you're young, um, the smoother your accent will become. Practice it. So practice phonetics when you're watching movies or listening to podcasts. Try to copy um, the smooth English accent. It's like what I should be doing with Spanish when I'm speaking Spanish is copying Spanish speakers. If it feels a little bit weird, you're probably doing it correctly. Okay, copying the accent of another language should feel kind of strange. So um, your accent is definitely a pronunciation about a band, I would say six, because I understand it. So I understand your words. It's just quite thick. Okay, your grammar is good. Your fluency is a bit low, so you kind of get stuck at certain points thinking, is this the right word? Am I saying the right idea? Um, and uh, you missed that explanation, so I had to ask you um, why, and then you said because we do the same activities, okay? Um, all right, let me look at your um, answer here a bit. So I said, what are, or I asked you, what are common places where people can socialize with each other? Um, in part three, try to um, avoid starting with I. So instead just start with a common place. And then instead of saying I can meet, so part three turns into general. It's like you're talking about people in general, not just about yourself. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. For so, our general people. Yeah, so it's a bit more formal. Exactly. It's okay to give an example with I or to connect with I, but don't start with I. So a common place where um, individuals can meet people is at a sports club uh, where a lot of people practice. Instead of people, when you're talking about a sports club, um, what is a person called who plays sports? An athlete. Yeah, exactly. Um, other people in the chat can answer these questions as well. So I'm looking at the chat also for everyone. Um, so athletes, yeah, look for those good nouns. They help your vocabulary go up. So where a lot of athletes practice the same sport. And uh, the kitchen office. Don't say I said. I know you said it because it was in the chat, but uh, just and the kitchen office. Or the office kitchen, as you said. Um, often the office kitchen, we actually call it the cafeteria, like in a big office building. We don't call it the office kitchen. We call it the office cafeteria, even when it has like a water boiler, um, stove top, maybe even a microwave oven or something like that. It's called the office cafe or cafeteria. Yes. Okay. So in the office cafeteria is a place where um, people... Do you know this word mingle? Um, M I N. What, which word? Mingle. Repeat it after me. Mingle. 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 Mingle means that you go, you say hi to somebody. Oh, I've seen you around the office. Do you live close by? Yes, I do. Oh, I think I saw you walking your dog. Yeah, I have a cute little puppy. I just bought him. That's mingling. And then you go to another person, you chit chat, you go to another person. We mingle at the office. We mingle at parties. Okay. So remember this word mingle, mingle. Mingle as an informal way to say meet. Can be. Um, it's not necessarily informal. It's not considered an, it is, it is a technical word, mingle. Um, it means to casually interact with others. So casually interact. Yes. Casually and briefly interact with others. 
And this is for everyone. When you hear new words, write it down, okay? So casually and briefly interact with others. It's mingle. So mingle uh, with people. And then this is where you can throw in a simple example. I uh, meet um, people in my company's uh, caf uh, cafeteria all the time. Okay, so that would be a new and improved version of that uh, response. Here, I'm going to say it and then repeat after me. Are you ready? Right. Okay. A common place where individuals can meet people is at a sports club where a lot of athletes practice the same sport and uh, the office cafeteria where people mingle uh, with each other. I meet people in my company's cafeteria all the time. Okay. Right. I go. Mm -hmm. A common place where individuals can meet people is at a sport club where a lot of athletes practice the same sport. And the office cafeteria is a place where people mingle with people. I meet people in my company's cafeteria all the time. Yeah. And somebody's saying the word people um, is a bit repetitive. And I agree. So we want to replace some of those words, some of those people. So I changed that set that second people with each other and then I meet people in my company's cafeteria all the time instead of people what could we use in that example I meet what in my company's cafeteria all the time um, professionals uh... who are the people that work with you they're called co-workers or co-workers yes so co-workers would be good or what else what's a what's a professional co-worker Starts with a C. Yeah, Chayani, Anahita, very good. Um, OP Nation. Colleagues. Colleagues, that's right. Okay, so let's try it, everyone, one more time, even better, okay? A common place where individuals can meet people is at a sports club where a lot of athletes practice the same sport, and the office cafeteria is a place where people mingle with each other. I meet colleagues in my company's cafeteria all the time. Uh, I try? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. A common place where individuals can meet people is at sport club where a lot of athletes practice the same sport. And the office cafeteria is a place where people mingle with each other. I met college in company's cafeteria all the time. Great. Okay. Uh, repeat the word. Colleagues. Colleagues. Very good. Colleagues. Colleagues. Okay. Colleagues. So colleagues. Colleagues. Good. Perfect. Nice. So that's the trick, okay? Um, when you're doing this at home, if you're practicing by yourself, then record your answer, write it down, make corrections, replace repetitive nouns with better nouns, more accurate nouns that will bump up your uh, vocabulary and your score. It will just sound much nicer, okay? Um, and then say it again, say it again. So uh, one mistake that a lot of people do when they practice their speaking uh, is they keep looking at new questions. They're always practicing new question, new question, new question. It's not a good strategy. You want to practice the same question at least a few times and your goal is to give a better and better answer all the time. Does that make sense? Yes, makes sense. Okay. I'll try it. Awesome, Federico. Okay, uh, keep up the good studies and I'll keep my fingers crossed that you get that um, study or holiday work visa. Uh, and where do you where are you planning to go if you get that visa, by the way? I think I would go to uh, uh, Sydney or Melbourne. Sydney or Melbourne. Okay, those are both great places. So, um, yeah, so I'll keep my fingers crossed and I'm sure you'll get there, Federico. You're going to have lots of fun. Thanks. Okay, bye for now. All right, that was Federico. Good job, Federico. Thumbs up. Nicely done. Okay. All right, let's see who's all volunteering here today with us. Um, we've got lots of people in here. <clears throat> let's jump a little bit lower on the list so uh, you don't get the idea that if you're lower down, then you don't have the chance. Um, okay. Alfred is a premium user and volunteering. I'm hoping that somebody down here will too. Thu, okay, let's see if Thu is here. Uh, if you're a premium student, make sure you volunteer. So Tanya, Varun, let me know. OK, 
Okay. Thu, I think, is new. Let's give Thu a chance. Are you ready? Thu. Manoya is asking, how do you pronounce company correctly? Well, it depends where you're from, but in on the West Coast here, we say company, company, okay? Company, it's a fast company. Okay, Thu, here we go. Hello. Hi, Thu, how are you? Okay. Hi, Thu, how are you? Thu. Okay. Good, Thu. First step, mute YouTube. So YouTube has a little speaker icon. Mute it and then we won't hear YouTube. Yes. Perfect. Okay, got it. Uh, Thu, where are you from? Yes, I'm from the Lambs. I have a, <laughs> I have a ever uh, in volunteer. This is your first time. Good for you. Great way to build confidence. Where are you living in Vietnam? You remember me? I have ever volunteer and you and you go me once. I don't remember. It must have been a while, as I'm sure you guessed. I kind of thought I did. I was like maybe a while back, but I wasn't sure that I did. So can you remind everybody where in Vietnam you're from, Thu? Uh, just um I can remember I remember us uh they have, uh, they have food or I know something, but I don't uh, remember them, and I don't, uh, I, I am not a familiar with them, and you know, but I, I know that uh, they are come from now. Okay, Thu, let's be positive, okay? Let's use a lot of positive English. I get you, but uh, but we definitely want to be like, I come from here, this is what the place is famous for, so don't worry about who knows it, who doesn't know it. Uh, Thu, I'm going to ask you one or two questions from part three. Uh, give me a nice full sentence answer. Are you ready? Um, I'm quite ready. Okay, good. All right, so uh, let's talk about social places and practices. Has socializing face-to-face -face become more or less common than in the past? Yes, um, uh, I'm sorry. Um, from my personal perspective, I think our three-to-five conversations um, will be reflected by uh, by technologies uh, such as our electronic devices uh, like um, my smartphone or computers. This is because uh, nowadays people tend to uh, uh, chat uh, or send emails um, uh, or, take, or take and they don't want to uh, miss face to face. And, and and they don't want to go hang out with their friend and um, and uh, this uh lose uh this uh like did lead to the like or conversation what can society do to encourage young people to socialize with others face to face pardon me what can society do to encourage young people to socialize with others face to face? Uh, I think yes. Uh, you do, do, do means uh, technologies encourage people to socialize face to face. Uh, what can society do to encourage young people to socialize with others face to face? Um, society. Uh, yes, um, I think well. I make men. Uh, I make many friends in society, and I meet them fight to fight, and they uh, they prove me to uh, speak more, and I can become an extrovert rather than an introvert. And I think. Okay, let's stop there and I'll give you some feedback. 
Okay, um, great effort. That was lovely. All right. So I love how you're okay. practicing, um, how you're putting effort. yourself out there. That was lovely. There. Oh, you're. Okay, don't don't uh, be careful with the feedback. Okay, um, so you would score about a. It's tough. Um, four point five, maybe a five. I would give you a five. Some examiners might say four point five. I think it's modest English, so not quite clearly fluent, but modest. Um, you have to focus on using your vocabulary. I actually, I think your vocabulary is quite good. Uh, believe it or not, I think that your vocabulary is probably like a band six, seven, easily. Um, like, um, uh, it's great that you know words like extrovert and introvert. That's not easy vocabulary. So that's considered higher level vocabulary. An extroverted person is somebody who's social, who's talkative. And an introverted person is somebody who's antisocial and shy. Okay. So extrovert, outwards, open, extrovert, uh, talkative, social, and introvert. Good vocabulary. Everybody should learn this. Introvert is somebody who is shy and not talkative. Okay. So keep those in mind. Um, so your vocabulary is very nice. Um, now, first of all, I ask you, how has social or has socializing face to face become more or less common than in the past? You said, yes, I'm sorry. Um, think, <coughs> never apologize. And this is for everybody. Never apologize for your speaking. Okay. Do? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. But Don't say I'm, I'm sorry. Don't say I'm sorry. I say it. Don't say I'm sorry. I said yes, I changed my word. Yeah, don't say it. Um, so instead of saying I'm sorry, use uh, let me start that again. Okay. When you apologize for your um, speaking, it, you're basically telling the examiner that you're having difficulty. Okay. So it's better to say let me start that again instead of saying I'm sorry. Okay. And then you said from my perspective, I think. Um, don't double on um, on the um, I think from my perspective because it's the same okay so let me start that again from my perspective face-to-face -face communication um, has been the question is present perfect has socializing uh, become right so has it uh, become it's present perfect so use present perfect okay so face-to-face uh, yes. -face, um, communication has been because it's actually passive present perfect has been replaced by uh, technology electronic uh, devices like smartphones and computers okay um, are used more often now uh, so I think, mm -hmm. I'm sorry go for it no you, okay. you keep saying um, yes okay so um, work on the fluency, right? So what you want to do is lots of repetition work through. I think you have a lot of great vocabulary. You want to put it into use, all right? And don't apologize for your language. Focus on fluent, connected answers, and you'll move from that 4.5 to a band 6 or a 6.5 very quickly, okay? But you need to use your language. So um, practice speaking with others. Uh, find speaking partners. Use the website. So don't just wait to, you know, talk to me on this uh, part of the website, but talk to other people. A lot of people from yes. Vietnam, a lot of people from other parts of the world, and just send them a message. Say, can we practice, okay? Um, so, Thu, I'm going to say this and then just copy me. Are you ready? Yes, I um, okay. have to. So, from my perspective, face-to-face -face communication has been replaced by technology. Electronic <coughs> devices like smartphones and computers are used more often now, so people miss face-to-face -face interactions and they don't want to hang out with their friends. 
I know this because I do it all the time. Go for it. From Smarters in the Protective, uh, face to face conversations have been replaced by te uh, technology electronic devices like smart uh, phones and computers. And you would more often now, so we will miss face to face interactions. They don't want to hang out with their friends. I know just because. I do it all the time. Okay. Even if it's not true, right? It's like a good example to finish. So once again, just lots of practice. So you want to practice saying that again and again until you get a nice smooth flow. You feel like, okay, that sounds good. And then you go to the next question and you practice the same, right? So keep practicing that fluency and really putting all of those beautiful words that you have in your head together, okay? Because I think you have a lot of vocabulary. The other good strategy through no. is do a lot of reading. So reading aloud. Read an English book and read it loudly. Do you do that? No. I uh, also learn English, but uh, I also learn vocabulary, but... I don't want to use many time because uh be because I have a problem with a pronunciation so I don't I can't follow on you have so, lots of vocabulary so pre so don't worry about more vocabulary just worry about using it so speak lots using that vocabulary don't bother you don't have to focus too much on learning more just use what you know then you can do that with speaking a lot uh, mirror speaking or speaking with others and also reading aloud okay and repeating what you hear when you're listening to a movie um, then repeat it check the subtitles um, and say it out loud over and over and over it takes a, well, it takes a while you just have to keep doing it okay yes but you're on the right track through so keep it up okay and it's fantastic that you volunteered and i hope you have a lovely rest of your day in vietnam yes have a idea. thank you <laughs> bye Thu. All right, give Thu a thumbs up. What a brave soul. She's just really putting herself out there and I could I could feel the effort through. I could literally feel your brain like turning and moving and thinking of how do I do this? What do I say? How do I use this word? And that's awesome, okay? Your brain is a learning machine and it will master a language, especially when you have the confidence um, that Thu is showing us. So um, that's great. All right, uh, Tanya, our premium student, is back here with us again today. Let's give Tanya a chance. Tanya, are you ready? And I love the thumbs up. Akira, Megan, Alexander, even throwing you a bouquet of flowers. Lovely, Alexander. Um, Fede with a pink hand wave. Uh, very nice, okay? Good work. Support each other, everyone. That's how you do it. Be patient, be supportive. It is so important. Patience and support are both virtues of humanity. They are the greatest virtues of humanity. So keep that going. All right, Tanya, here we go. Hello. Hi, Tanya, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I've got a good cup of coffee in me, so I'm, I'm a <laughs> bit hyper. Um, Tanya. Uh, can you just tell all of our viewers um, where you're calling from and why you're doing IELTS? I'm calling from Portugal and I want to do IELTS because I want to work in Scotland. I remember that, yes. Um, why Scotland, if you don't mind me asking? Yes, because my best friend works there and I want to join in the same clinic. I see. So that example that you gave me the other day was factual, where you said that you yes. sent an x-ray to your friend. I got you. Well, yeah, it's definitely, if you can be close with your bestie, then uh, that's great. Yeah, hanging out with best friends. My best friend's in Vancouver, and uh, I miss him sometimes, even though he's not too far away. It's uh, I have to take a boat from the island to get there. So um, anyhow, well, let me help you with that mission to okay. join your best friend. And is your friend also originally from Portugal? Yes, in the same city. We studied together at university. Oh, so the two of you have lots of history, I'm sure, right? Yes. All right, got you. Okay, so let's uh, talk about social places and uh, practices. Has socializing face-to-face -face become more or less common than in the past? 
I believe that today we use less face-to-face -face interactions because we now have access to applications and uh, social networks that would allow us to improve these skills comparing to 20 years ago that uh, to interact with someone we need to be present and using face-to-face -face interaction. What can society do to encourage young people to socialize with others face-to-face? -face? So I believe that uh, parents should take the, the first step in order to to taught these kids how to do this correctly. They should put a limit time for them to use uh, mobile phones or even computers and even obligated him to, to play outside with their friends. Okay, great. You have good English. Um, as I said last time, I think last time I um, scored you at a, about a band eight, if I remember correctly. That was maybe at the start of this week that we last interacted. Um, so for this one, I would score you at about a band seven, seven, five. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The band scores will vary according to questions. So from question to question. For one question, you might have a band seven answer. For the other one, you might have an eight. Eventually, you'll end up with an average. Okay, so maybe overall, if I think about your performance last time and this time, your overall is kind of getting closer to a 7.5 from what I'm getting so far, okay? I'll show you why. So I did not type your first response. I let you just kind of say that and I was um, paying attention to you. It was quite good. Um, and that was probably closer to a 7.5 response if I were thinking about the mistakes, the type of mistakes, okay? So <clears throat> the examiner is um, looking at your response in two ways. Uh, they're looking at the mistakes and they're looking at the type of mistakes. And of course, they're also looking at how many mistakes. But um, the big question in the examiner's mind is, is your mistake changing the meaning or making it difficult to understand? If yes, it's a big mistake. If no, it's a small mistake. They're also thinking, is the mistake a natural mistake that um, a native speaker might make or somebody that's got more advanced English or is it kind of an awkward mistake? So these are what affect your end results. Um, so I asked you the follow-up question. Um, what can society do to encourage young people <clears throat> to socialize with others face-to-face? -face? And you said, so I believe that parents should take the first step. That was a really good natural answer. So a lot of very good to expert, which is a band eight to band nine level users would answer in that way. Okay, would answer with that start. So that was great, all right? Now, mm -hmm. uh, following that piece, so and, and believe me, students, um, when your examiner is marking you, especially if they're um, experienced examiners, the speaking examiners often are, uh, they have years of experience, they pull apart every part of your speech um, as they're listening to you. So um, this next element here, you said in order to taught these skills, now your pronunciation was off on uh, teach taught. Mm -hmm. wasn't quite clear and it was confusing. I know what word you were trying to say there, but you weren't saying it clear enough. So you have to be careful. Any word, uh, Tina, that you realize mm, it's not pronounced correctly, you have to say it three, four times and use it in your speech as much as possible, like purposefully tell somebody, oh, I taught somebody how to uh, fix a cavity <laughs> last week. Why are you telling me that? Because I'm practicing the word taught and teach. <laughs> okay, So... Um, so just repeat after me. Teach, taught. Teach, taught. 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 Yeah, it's a sharp T because unfortunately there are, or fortunately there are um, words that are very similar like thought, right? Think, yes. thought. thought. Teach, taught. Okay. Taught. Yeah, that's the one where it's very important With that the th. Th. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So th, thought. Thought. Taught. Taught. Okay, one more time. And this is for everybody. Think, thought. Think, thought. Teach, taught. Teach, taught, taught. 
taut. Taut. Yeah, they're both sharp T's. The with your mouth, the difference here is that with the taut, so here you have the mouth, okay, of the person. Taut. All right, I'm gonna mm -hmm. draw a quick little picture here. You'll see it. So um, with and those are the teeth, <laughs> lovely teeth. I'm sure you'll agree as a dentist. Um, so when you're making the sharp T sound, then your tongue, okay, uh, pushes up against the teeth right here. So it pushes up against the teeth. Um, and when you're making the softer th th sound, the, the teeth, if this is the tongue, the teeth push against the edge of the tongue. So the sharp T is teach taught. Try teach it again. Mm -hmm. Taught. Teach taught. Tut. Yeah, when you make that sharp T, really push your tongue up tut. almost to the roof of the mouth before your tut. teeth. So ta ta ta. Okay, taut. And then tut. when you're doing the th, it's think thought. Tut. You spit okay. the T. You spit the yes, T out. Yes, I the have tongue. a huge difficulty with this word. <laughs> a lot of people do. That's why I'm taking three, four minutes for this, okay? Because yes. a lot of people do, all right? Um, so, um, and especially, unfortunately, this is the kind of situation where the pronunciation will change the meaning, right? And it becomes confusing. So that's why you want to avoid it. Okay, so in order to uh, teach kids, because it's general, so here we use teach. In order okay. to teach these kids how to do this correctly, uh, they should, um, parents, I would repeat parents here, parents should, or guardians if you don't want to repeat parents or moms and dads. Uh, guardians should um, put a limit time. Put a limit time is unnatural, okay? So the natural way to say this is should limit the time. Okay. Uh, with computers, time spent on uh, computers and obligate, nice use of the word obligate, good vocabulary, obligate them to play outside with friends. Uh, my parents made me uh, play with my friends um, at least a few hours uh, each day growing up. So I uh, still chat face to face often. Okay, don't forget that smooth example. Okay. All right, so that's the new and improved response with that seven to nine improvement, okay? I'm going to repeat the whole uh, piece now. Everybody who's watching, repeat after me, Tina as well, of course. So here we go. Uh, so I believe that parents should take the first step in order to teach these kids how to do this correctly. Guardians should limit the time spent on computers and obligate them to play outside with their friends. My parents made me play with my friends a couple of hours each day growing up, so I still chat face to face. So I believe that parents should take the first step in order to teach these kids how to do this correctly. Guardians should limit the time spent on computers and obligate them to play outside with their friends. My parents made me play with my friends at least a few hours each day growing up, so I still chat face to face often. Very nice, okay? So um, small corrections, important corrections, corrections between seven and nine become much smaller, but they're important, okay? So focus on these as you're practicing. And of course, as a dentist, for you and for professionals like you, doctors, lawyers, etc., precise language, controlled language is extremely important. And native speakers as well as non-native speakers practice this all the time in these positions. So keep going with it, okay, Tina? Okay. All right, nice. you're doing great. You're doing great. And you're, you keep coming back, which is a good step, okay? I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Thank you. Tomorrow will be my, my exam. Then I will, uh, I could say you the, the band I get. Yeah, let me know. Absolutely. Let me know how you do, and then you can go from there, right? So if you okay. need more practice, we're here for you. If you don't, if you pass, it's fantastic. Let me know, though, for sure, okay? Okay, bye. Thank All right. you. Good luck on your test. Bye for now. Tanya, sorry, Tanya, bye. I kept calling her Tina. Tanya, you correct me if I don't pronounce your name right. It makes me feel horrible. So say, I'm sorry, say Adrian, uh, sorry, but just uh, real quick, I'm not Tina, I'm Tanya. 
Okay, <clears throat> so correct me. All right, um, let's take somebody else. Who else is uh, Alfred? Another one of our premium users. Um, Alfred, I haven't heard Alfred in a while except uh, just recently. And Alfred, we used to chat all the time. How are you doing? Are you ready? Let's talk to Alfred. Thanks for the support, everyone. Good thumbs up for Tanya. Tanya, you're doing great. And I really do hope that you fix all those Scottish teeth there in the UK. The British are known to have needs when it comes to teeth. Okay, Alfred is ready. Hello, Adrian. Hi, Alfred. How is the weekend so far? Yeah, my weekend is good so far. So far, so good? Yes, yeah, yeah. mostly good. So far, so good. It's a common expression in English, right? So far, so good. All right. Um, I'll write that down for everybody. It might be new for some people. Yeah, we often say, so far, so good. Um, often you'll get that question, how's it going? And then people will often re respond, so far, so good. So let's let's try that, Alfred. How's it going? So far, so good. Yeah, there. That's some natural English. How's it going? So far, so good. Okay, Alfred, can you tell us, can you tell everybody where you're calling from? So currently I'm calling from uh, Bali because I spent my weekend in Bali right now you're making me jealous <laughs> oh i went to bali for the weekend is it nice and warm yes yeah, it's, it's nice and warm and i like to see the golden hour so i went to beach went to the beach for the golden hour do you do photography yeah yeah i like doing photography that's yeah. one of my uh, hidden talent, I think. <laughs> hidden talents. All right. Yeah, golden hour is great. I mean, I, I work with video and film a lot, and uh, golden hour is just beautiful when you're doing pictures of nature and people. Just that color, right, is amazing. Um, okay, well, let's uh, get into some part three questions. So let's talk about social places and uh, practices. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, some people think that pubs and dance clubs are good places to socialize, while others feel the opposite. Why is there this difference? Well, I think it depends on the on their preference of uh, background, because some people uh, like to hang out with their friends in pubs. And then some people uh, thought that, oh, later on they would drunk and then they would um, do something silly. So it can be something that is make difference between those people. What are good ways to start a conversation with a new acquaintance? In my point of view, the first thing that we need to uh, do is say hi first, and then after that, uh, we can ask them about how their day is going on, and then keep I contact when having conversation with them. Can you give examples? For example, um, the, uh, yesterday I went to a beach and I met um, a guy from Norway and then yeah, we share stories about uh, how how is it the life in Norway look like and then 
Um, yeah, we keep on talking about our hobbies sometimes. So it would be good conversation so far. Okay. All right. Okay, Alfred. Um, so that was about a band mm, six. You're talking a bit slowly and it's a bit broken up, but I think it's because you're doing a lot of thinking. So absolutely you want to be smoother and faster. Some examiners might give you a five or a 5.5. I would give you a six because I realize that you're thinking a lot about what you want to say, not just how you want to say it. Um, but some examiners are quite strict and they're like, well, I can't say six because six is fluent and I don't think he's fluent. So they'll give you a, a lower score for that. So you need to speak faster. So combine um, thinking and speaking. So if you're talking to the guy from Norway and Bali, that's good practice because I'm sure he was also speaking in English, right? Did you really meet yes. a guy from Norway on the beach? Yes, yes. Um, I, I, I met a guy from Norway on the beach. Okay. And then, and then uh, we went to a restaurant near the beach and then we uh, have some meals and then uh, but I uh, will split the bills <laughs> okay good, yeah. good for you so you so even though he was from Norway you both went Dutch on the bill right do you yeah. know this expression <laughs> <laughs> are you familiar um, we say we went uh, Dutch, or Dutch. Um, this is an idiom which means we split the bill okay oh. um, so we went Dutch uh, on the bill at the restaurant Okay. It's kind of funny. Okay, so <clears throat> even though he's from uh, Norway, you went Dutch on the bill at the restaurant. Okay. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I figured it was a real story, which was good. It's good. If you can dip into real life, if you can use real life examples, that's fantastic. Okay, I like it. All right. Um, let me uh, go back to my first question with you here, Alfred. I said, some people think that pubs and dance clubs are good places to socialize while others feel the opposite. And you were thinking, thinking, and you're like, yeah, okay, there's logic here. Um, you said, well, I think it depend. Uh, careful with your uh, possessives, okay? So, well, I think it depends on their uh, preference of background because some people like to hang out with their friends at pubs and let loose and they and they think and others I would say here think so there was a bit of confusion a bit of awkward language a bit of grammatical oddities so and others think that um, People in pubs, like I get what you mean by later, but um, people in pubs, we need to have clear language there. People in pubs eventually uh, get drunk. Not they would drunk, uh, they would become drunk, but they get drunk. Okay, get drunk. Yeah, they get drunk and would do something um, <clears throat> silly. Okay, and then you said, and this is something. Careful with the something, something. Not too much of that, okay? Try to avoid something, everything, thing, anything with thing. Okay, try to avoid it. Um, and then you kind of lost your direction. Really pay attention to having a good start and a good finish, Alfred. So start strong, end strong, okay? Um, and this is the reason they prefer... Uh, to avoid places um, with alcohol okay? okay all right so let's try this start strong finish strong well I think it depends on their preference of background because some people like to hang out with their friends at pubs and let loose and others think that people in pubs eventually get drunk and they do something silly and this is the reason they avoid places with alcohol yeah. Go for it. Well, I think it depends on the preference of background because some people like to hang out with their friends at pubs and let loose and others think that people in pubs eventually get drunk and they would do something silly 
and this is the reason why they afford places with alcohol. And if I'm really paying attention to the question, it also asked about dance clubs. So I can just throw that in oh, at yeah. the ends. So I can say including dance clubs because it's the same, right? Dance oh, yeah. clubs also including dance clubs. Yeah. And now I've answered yeah. the question very clearly. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean like uh, earlier I couldn't uh, hear the dance carefully. So I missed that that tense, I thought it's something else so, uh, because I just noticed the pops. Yeah, and some yeah. people, um, the problem is some people don't know the uh, word dance clubs because they only hear disco, right? In a lot of um, places, they call oh, yeah. them discos, but for everybody watching, oh. know that a dance club is a disco. In um, Canada, in the US, we usually call them dance clubs, not discos. If you ask somebody, where's the disco, they might kind of smile. Um, disco is a type of dance from the 70s, and so we tend to call these places dance clubs clubs instead of discos okay so yeah. discos is old school um all right and it's in here like uh it's in here uh we also uh tend to use disco sometimes. disco instead of dance club yeah because yeah, it stayed from yeah. the 70s but uh in uh canada and the u.s this changed and same with uk it changed over time because we don't really disco so much anymore so right. it's dance clubs all right, um, that was good. Um, so keep practicing, Alfred, uh, and um, review the other questions that I asked you as well. Um, think about where you know okay. you can make some uh, mistakes or where you can make some corrections and make it a bit better. Okay, I really liked okay. how you thought about the guy from Norway. That was great. He did not know that he would be a part of a YouTube channel the next day. I <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I will be mentioning you on a live class on YouTube tomorrow. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, Alfred, have an awesome rest of your time in Bali. And um, my spirit is with you, Alfred. I'm on the Bali beach uh, with you. <laughs> all right. Okay, Alfred. Good talking uh, with you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. All right, let's give uh, Alfred a jealous thumbs up. I'm sure some of you are on a nice beach, but uh, Bali, yeah, that's, uh, that's a place to be on this weekend, that's for sure, right? Okay, um, let me uh, check somebody else here. Um, let's see who is in our... Um, okay, Jacko, did you, did you fix it? Did you, is it working? Okay. Uh, FYI, I use Safari. I have tried to fix this, but it has not worked yet. Okay, I don't know, Jacko. I don't know what's going on. Um, let me see if we can reach out to somebody else. It looks like the the uh, chat socket might have uh, closed. Let me see if I can. I can't reach out to Harsha. Um, all right. Um, as I was mentioning, we're doing upgrades to the website, so we're making it better and faster. So you might see some. Uh, some momentary glitches over the next uh, 48 hours but students that volunteered and premium students and members thank you so much um, especially for your support and helping us help you uh, for all of those who have exams coming up and there's quite a big group right now there's quite a few people who are doing exams I hope that um, you have uh, the best of luck and I hope you get some good questions that you're familiar with uh, again, um, I'm going to actually reboot that chat server so all of you can keep talking with each other. I just did that. So if you refresh your page, um, you will be able to continue using this chat. And people like uh, Tanya who have exams tomorrow, I strongly recommend uh, searching for more speaking partners uh, if you've got a bit of time and practicing more speaking, okay? Um, so to join the premium IELTS package, to become a premium user, click that big red button that's just right above uh, my head there. It's a one-time payment uh, for lifetime access and it's really, really worth it, absolutely. And again, you're going to see an even better, faster uh, website. So uh, check that out. Um, students, uh, it was lovely uh, teaching you this week. I hope you all continue to have a fantastic weekend after you finished your exam. Make sure to take a moment to enjoy life and relax. Uh, remember that you are all uh, brilliant, uh, beautiful individuals. Never let anybody get you down or tell you otherwise. Don't be too hard on yourself or to be too critical. Um, 
my name is Adrian, and I am signing out um, from uh, Victoria, British Columbia. Whether you are planning to get a holiday working visa or to live and work abroad or to study or immigrate, um, those are all great goals in life. Never lose sight of those goals. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day, and if it's late in your country, have a good rest and good sleep. Much love to all of you. Bye for now.